here's your host, Kevin Conover. Bring your time and bring your shame. Welcome to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. My website is educateforlife.org. You can pick up recordings of the shows there. We also have an online curriculum that's available there. Uh, if you're looking into questions about God or the Bible. My guest today is Esther Valdez. She is the principal attorney at Valdez and Associates. Largely what they deal with is immigration issues. And so, you know, she's a Bible-believing Christian, and immigration is a hot subject in our uh, culture today. Uh, there's a lot of people freaking out, saying that Trump is opposed to immigrants and is trying to end all immigration into America, right? People are freaking out because of the wall. And as, as Christians, we want to look at this and go, how do we approach this issue? What are the real issues? And I thought it would be great to have Esther on the show because, um, well, first of all, she goes to the same church as I do. Uh, she sits in my Sunday school class all the time. And uh, she's very smart, has a lot of uh, uh, information and, and a history dealing with this issue. She studied law at UC Berkeley, also graduated from UC San Diego. She's a local here. And uh, you went to Chula Vista High School, Esther. I did. I'm a San Diego native. That's fantastic. <laughs> so um, she's got all kinds of insight into these issues that you might not get otherwise. And so um, we're going to have a great show today answering all the difficult questions that are coming up. I got an email, Esther, um, just a couple days ago from the ACLU. Now, typically the ACLU is not somebody I look at as a friend. They, uh, Alan Sears, president of ADF, called them the largest religious censor in America. Um, and so not typically something I'm excited about, but they did um, write this email here and it had to do with Mother's Day. And it says, stand with immigrant moms. It says, earlier this year, police pulled over a California mother, Esperanza, for having tinted windows as she drove to church. They called Immigration and Customs Enforcement, that's ICE, uh, agents based on a 14-year-old deportation order that was issued after her attorney at the time kept her money but took no action in her case. Now Esperanza is fearful that ICE agents will find her. And then it goes on to say every mother should be able to raise her children, take them to school, to the doctor or public library without the fear of deportation. And um, so Esther, is this a, a real issue? Is this really happening right now in California? What's, what's, what's happening in our culture? Obviously, the way that story is written is it to tug at your heart, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, first thing, you know, they don't split the immigrant population into what's documented immigrants, legal immigrants, yeah. and illegal immigrants mm -hmm. or undocumented immigrants. Just as a backstory, Kevin, my family is a Mexican immigrant roots. My mom and my dad, my three older sisters were all born in Mexico. I was born here. Okay. Um, my parents were here on a visa, which is just permission to enter the United States, but they didn't have permanent residence. So I went back with my family for five years. I lived in Mexico. When they had their permanent residence and throughout the whole process, they were vetted, inspected. They had to make sure that they could maintain economic solvency here in this country. Once all of that, which took years of yeah. waiting and prayer. How many years would you say? Well, I was a little girl. I yeah. was born here, but I was a baby. I didn't come to live here in the United States until 77, 78. Oh, wow. So once that was all completed, we were allowed to come in. So the way the story is skewed is stand with immigrants. We all stand with immigrants. Mm -hmm. As Christians, we're mandated to stand with the foreigner, with the alien, and not to oppress them. Yeah. And but what they don't because, disclose in the yeah. story is that she had an outstanding deportation order. So already... Now we figure out there was no vetting, there was no inspection, no admission or in the law, what we call admission and inspection. That's the minimum requirement. Just like as a homeowner, you want to know who's knocking at your door. Who are you? What do you want to come for? She was never admitted and inspected. So here we are with a mom on Mother's Day who was detained here in the United States and now may have to go back to her country of origin. My question always is with regard to these these emotional stories, focusing on a separation of families is, why didn't they focus on the separation of families that happened when they had to leave Mexico because of the poverty and the violence? Mm. That's where the separation started in the first place. When mom or dad had to walk across the river, uh, swim across the stream, cross a desert, 11,000 dead immigrants, because it was so bad in their country of origin, they preferred to leave everything behind. Wow. Leave their culture, their families, and even their children. Yeah, what would drive a person to, to be that desperate? Exactly. And that's always my question and my query. 
Why don't we focus on the root of the problem? The separation starts in Mexico, not here. Mm. Here we're in an enforcement mode, trying to uphold the laws of our nation. And, but the real separation started in Mexico. That's, that's where really our focus has to happen. That's a great point. I was just reading on your Facebook page, you posted that article. CNN reported that 2016, Mexico was, I think, the second deadliest country. In the world. That's incredible. Yes. That Surpassing Iran, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Wow. That's a little known fact. And sometimes even within the Christian community, I receive pushback by saying, how can you represent undocumented people? Well, you're undocumented if you choose to stay here, overstay here without documentation. Mm. Asylum seekers are different. And that's the vast majority of what I represent. They knock at the door of the port of entry of America, and they say, I fear for my life. Mm. They go through a credible fear interview. They have to be found credible by an asylum officer. And once they are deemed to have a credible fear that their government will persecute them or will not protect them, yeah. then they are admitted and allowed to go through an entire judicial process. That CNN report that you saw on my Facebook page at Valdez and Associates or even on uh, my personal webpage Esther Valdez demonstrates the real fear, the threat of violence, the destabilization of a federal government, and the constant threat of violence due to transnational criminal organizations, aka the drug cartels. Yeah, the drug cartels. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it says on here, the article actually reports that Syria, which we all know what's going on in Syria, that's all over the news, had 50,000 dead in <laughs> 2016, and Mexico comes in second at 23,000. Iraq is third at 17,000 and so that's incredible and why isn't why aren't we doing more to try to encourage uh, what's happening in Mexico to stop um, we're doing a lot to try to persuade uh, Syria you know the, the, to, to bring that down the death toll down and to intervene but what kind of intervention is going on in Mexico well Mexico and the United States have a fraught type of history yeah you know stemming from 1848 the mexican um concession over to the united states that still hurts yeah um but we have a saying in mexico i think it was benito juarez who said you know the respect for the foreign means peace meaning if we respect our neighbor to the north we will be able to maintain peace yeah um, so for Mexicans, sovereignty is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. They do not want a U.S. operation, kind yeah. of like what happened with Colombia and the DA happening in order to capture Pablo Escobar. They don't want that happening. But where it's escalating and escalating, what can we do but achieve this th diplomatically and through proper channels by protecting our nation and the the reverse side of the flip side of this wall that potentially may be built or not? may be that Mexico and the Mexican government may may be able to look at their own system and say, hey, why are our people leaving? Yeah. What is causing men and women to flee? There's villages where only women and children exist because all the men came to the United States. Yeah. That's a separation of families that nobody talks about. There's children who are orphaned by mom and dad because they had to come over here to work. Where's the outcry in this? Yeah. And do you get a lot of pushback from, um, say, uh, people on the left or more liberal minded people saying, Hey, um, you know, and then, and then how do they respond to this? What you're, the, what you're pointing out that, Hey, look at something needs to be done at the, I mean, we're dealing with a kind of a symptom, but what's the cause down here, you know? Right. As a conservative and mainly as a Christian, there's yeah. pushback from both sides, sure. correct? Because everywhere I go, I try to bring in common sense and reason. So, but that's not popular with the left, is yeah. it? <laughs> Just logic and yeah. numbers. But that's my job as an attorney. And I've been very successful in being able to prove and win a number of Mexican asylum cases, which only have a 5% success rate. I've won oh, close to two dozen Mexican asylum cases. Wow. To prove it, you have to show that the Mexican government is one and the same as the persecutor mm. or refuses to protect a protected social group or a family member, or on the count of five protected classes, race, religion, yeah. et cetera. So from the left, I get a lot of pushback saying, you're talking bad about our nation, about Mexico. Yeah. Well, I'm not talking bad if I'm stating the facts. That's right. And I'm very empathetic, and I'm protecting the very people that they purport to want to advocate for. Wow. My guest today is Esther Valdez. She's a principal attorney at Valdez & Associates, and her specialty is immigration. And um, she, of course, has a very... Uh, uh, particular perspective that's very good because she has a background where she has 
uh, immigrated. Essentially, her family has immigrated to the U.S. And so um, we're going to continue to talk about this and how we should approach these issues. It's very important because we want to be sympathetic as Christians, but at the same time, uh, isn't it important to you know establish the laws and, and uphold the laws? So um, stay with us. We're going to be right back. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teaching. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. What do leading local restaurants have in common? They depend on Express Fix Coffee for new and used coffee and espresso machines, repairs, and affordable monthly service. Dave Martin and his local team provide water filtration services too. Call San Diego's best espresso repair company, serving your home and business. Learn more online at expressfixcoffee.com. Call Express Fix Coffee at 619-867-3853. 619-867-3853. How can you live in San Diego and miss out on enjoying the water? Fast Lane Kayaking sells popular Hobie Cat kayaks that you pedal, not paddle. That means your hands are left free for fishing and fun. Just throw these on your roof rack. They're light and they're easy to use and maintain. Just rinse them off. Try one free on a demo ride. For 36 years, Ron and Debbie Lane have served San Diego with fun, family-friendly water sports of all kinds. Learn more. FastLaneSailing.com. 619-222-0766. When you need tires or service, count on Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service in Oceanside for a full range of affordable options in all the brands you trust. See their great customer reviews and special offers online. Hours Tuesday through Friday, 7.30 to 5.30, and Saturdays, 7.30 to 5. Call Dan and his team at 760-439-1631. Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service, 2405 Oceanside Boulevard in Oceanside, 760-439-1631. I will cast- Thanks for listening today. This is Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. My website's educateforlife.org. And um, where my guest today is Esther Valdez. We're talking about immigration. And you may or may not know this, but the Bible actually has quite a bit to say on immigration, interestingly enough, because the Jews themselves had to deal with immigration. What do you do if you have a certain particular set of values? You're trying to keep those values established. But the neighboring nations don't have the same values you do, but a lot of people want to move to your country. How do you deal with that situation as they they come into the country? This is Leviticus 19.34. It says, The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born. Love them as yourself, for you are foreigners in Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Another one, Leviticus 24.22 says, You are to have the same law for the foreigner and the native born. I am the Lord your God. And this is incredible because from a Christian perspective, you know, um, what we're seeing here is that God is asking us, he shows no partiality um, and he loves all people. Uh, So how do we deal with this immigration issue? And um, I wanted to ask you this, Esther, you know, um, people are saying, hey, Trump is against immigration. He's trying to keep people from coming in the country. Um, You know, it started out as a really a Muslim issue and and kind of these are these Mm -hmm. particular countries. We're looking at Mexico, um, and then there are some people that on the left that say, "Look at just open the borders, let the people come in. What's the problem?" Uh, and people, you know, conservatives often will get accused of of not being very loving or compassionate because they're trying to go this go about this in an orderly manner. So, what would you say to the person on the left who says to you, "Hey, you are not compassionate. You are not loving. What's your problem with not allowing these people just to come in? They're they need, you know, like you're saying, asylum or they need help." As a lawyer, it's very simple. Follow the law. There is a way to do it properly. We have family petitions. You can petition your mom, your dad, your spouse, children under the age of 21, even over the age of 21. Just follow the pattern. But what we have is so many people just outside of the law that we don't know what to do with it. And that's really the key issue here. And as Christians, the responsibility is twofold as well. Not only are we to respect and protect and not oppress and to welcome the foreigner, 
but also God establishes what the response is to be from the stranger or the foreigner. He and I, my middle name is Ruth, so I love that book. And look at what this Esther woman says. Ruth. Yes, it can't get better than that. Can't get better. <laughs> I was named by missionaries. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, the only two books of the Bible named by women too. Yeah, that's great. Yes, but notice her response as a Moabite woman entering a land where she was not wanted. She was going to be despised and possibly never marry. Mm. She knew the odds were against yeah, her. Yeah, because the Jewish men didn't want to marry a, a foreigner. Exactly, yeah. knowing that she had all sorts of cultural traits that they opposed. Yeah. But she says right there and then, your God is my God. Mm. And she takes a pledge, this nation here will I die. Yeah. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Talking to our mother-in-law, Naomi. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the response that God wants to invoke on for this to work. If you look at Solomon's passage when he dedicated the temple, yeah. he says, and if the foreigner comes and he proclaims and accepts this God and the values. So as Christians, our responsibility is also to evangelize. Yeah. If we can't go out and spread God's word in Haiti or in Russia, the world is coming here. Let's evangelize, save, equip. And if they do happen to encounter a deportation order, the, I've had clients who go and get saved by people who have been deported from this nation. Wow. They have gotten saved. They become Christians, and then they start churches and gospel ministries look in Mexico that. that are very successful. That's the gospel is being spread no matter what. You look in historically at the Jewish diaspora. It happened through persecution. Yeah. They were all concentrated in Jerusalem, then Samaria, and Jesus looked out and he said, this is going to go to the ends of the earth. Everything in God's will is perfect. Yeah. We don't know how this is going to happen, but we do know that as a Christian nation, Unlike any other, with an exceptional history, I do believe in American exceptionalism and the extraordinary Christian values of this country need to be preserved for the good of the world. Mm. Where else were the world's refugees flee to but yes. this country? Who else is sending gospel to the ends of the earth but this country? And that is my heart as a Christian, preserving this nation not due to racist exclusionary tactics, not for any other reason, but so that the gospel is, people are equipped and the gospel is spread mm. throughout the world. And if we let if we let people come in and just bring their values with them and those values then begin to, um, no pun intended, but they begin to trump <laughs> our values, right? Then what ha ends, ends up happening is, is that America ceases to be America. And, and you, then people won't be fleeing to America anymore, that's true. But like you said, they, they will have no place to flee to. We will no longer have a place to flee to. So like I mentioned, I represent people who are fleeing from other nations. Mm. I re I've represented Iraqi Christians who have fled here. Um, and um, and won their case. Yeah. I've represented Mexican Christians who have fled here and also have been very successful by the grace of God. The people, the majority of people standing down to the governments are Christians. They're yeah. saying, no, I'm not going to deal with drugs. I'm not going to sell my daughter into prostitution. My son will not behead or kill or sequester anybody in your military. So they run and they come here. Mm. I represented a young man from Haiti and um, his father was a Baptist minister, wow. and their house was burned down. Their village was burned down by people who did not practice Christianity. They practiced uh, witchcraft, or they thought that he was a witch. So he fled, and I happened to run into him. I was able to help him as well. Wow. The Christians are coming here. We we see that the Lord is concentrating them here in our in America. God sees the future. We don't know why, but it's already happening. Yeah, yeah. So. Esther, when, when somebody says to you, um, hey, you're making it too difficult for somebody to become a legal immigrant uh, with all these laws in place and everything, why don't you just help these people come in? Why can't California have sanctuary cities? Um, you know, in this whole controversy over our, our own state and SB 54, where they're trying to say, hey, we don't want um, local officials to work with federal officials uh, and, and so forth. Um, your your argument to them is, hey, there's a <clears throat> excuse me, there's a way to do it, and if we don't do it that way, we're going to end up hurting ourselves more than helping helping. We're going to actually end up not even helping them. Is that is that what you're saying? Well, and also the appeal is to the government as well. Hmm. Many many people have been waiting in line to get those petitions processed. They've been approved, and but the line is so long they've been waiting for over a decade. In some instances, 17, 18, 19 years. 
That's also not fair either.、Mm. So I would appeal to the government to hire more agents, process these petitions. There's many people trying to do it the right way. It's、yeah. just clogged, and then there's caps as well. So we need to release. Yeah, um, release this pressure that's that's being created by the backlog and so many people waiting around the world to enter the United States lawfully. Number one, yeah, and number two, also enforcement at the border for security. We know we're the number one target for、um, the jihadists, for people who are waging war on、yeah. Christianity around、yeah. the world.、Yeah. We don't want to call it a war on religion. But in a, they understand it to be so. Yeah, that makes it primordial and very important that we protect our border and know who's walking in. And again, many many people have been filing legal petitions. They have their paperwork. It's just the backlog so great. So I would say, let the government hire more agents, hire more judges, hire more、um, people to process these petitions quicker, get them legal, and also establish more enforcement procedures. So my guest today is Esther Valdez, and we we're talking about immigration. And maybe you're、um, somebody who's dealt with this issue. Maybe you have family members who are concerned about being deported, and、um, maybe you're afraid that、uh, the government is not your your maybe the Mexican government. If you're if you're a local、um, who's who's immigrated from Mexico, maybe you're concerned that hey, I need help.、Um, Esther Valdez. That's what she does. She's an immigration attorney. She helps lots of people. And you told me you have five people just this past week who have contacted you about this situation. About relatives who received a knock on the door early in the morning by ICE agents who were、um, enforcing the law,、mm. enforcing prior orders of removal, and trying removal. to get help. So it's very likely、yes. that you know maybe you're listening out there, and this is a problem for you. So.、Um, Uh, please contact her, Esther Valdez. You can look her up on Facebook.、Uh, you can also just Google her name. Everything will pop, pop up, Esther Valdez. And、um, stay with us. We're going to continue to talk about this. What's the process of becoming a legal immigrant, and how difficult is that, and and what happens along the way?、Um, and we're looking at this, of course, from a biblical perspective, as people who love God, who love Christ, and who、uh, Christ has called us to love others. And so, what we're trying to do is the best thing we can for、um, everyone. We'll be right back. Before I bring my need, I will bring my heart. Hi, this is Kevin Conover. Will you please donate to Educate for Life so we can share the truth of God's word with kids in public schools? You can donate online at donate to efl dot org. The Bible used to be read in public schools on a regular basis prior to the 1960s, but today most kids are completely clueless when it comes to the content and the historical and scientific accuracy of the Bible. Please help us by donating online at donate to efl dot org. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teaching. Teachings. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. Hi, I'm Marissa Conover, and I would love to help you buy or sell your home. I've worked as a realtor for more than 13 years, and as a San Diego native, my passion and experience will help make your move as peaceful as can be. Call me at 619-251-1577. That's 619-251-1577, or visit conoverhomes.com. This is throughout all ages ministry with Joe and Stacy. We would like to equip you to share the gospel with confidence in a biblical and effective way. We would like to teach you through the proclamation of the gospel. Whether you're the skeptic, God who created you said that He has made Himself known to you, so that you are without excuse. One on one evangelism. How do you think you can get to heaven? I've never really thought about it, but I've always just thought of you know doing good. For more information, go throughoutallages.com. Like us on Facebook or visit us at YouTube at Throughout All Ages. I'm giving it. No more hiding, no more stalling. I hear you call. Thanks for tuning in to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. My website's educateforlife.org, where you can listen to a recording of this show or past shows. Recently, had on Dr. Henry Richter. He is、uh, the scientist that launched the very first U.S. satellite into space. He he led the team that did that. He's、uh, almost 90 years old. He turns 90 in June. 
and a fantastic interview with him. Also just recently interviewed uh, David Barton of Wall Builders, um, who is an expert, probably the premier historian on America's Christian heritage. And uh, so there's all kinds of amazing uh, interviews up there. Also just interviewed Julie Doan, who is a uh, expert on video games addictions. So all kinds of issues that are relevant to your life, to your family's life. My guest today is Esther Valdez, and we're talking about immigration. You know, when I was a, I was a youth pastor quite a while ago, I actually had a young man in my uh, youth group who was um, an un- undocumented I- immigrant, and he was very afraid of being um, deported. His brother had been born here, but he hadn't, um, and it, it was just a very difficult situation. And I was, as a youth pastor, trying to be a godly, loving person at the same time. I'm also wanting to follow the law. And so, um, Esther, what is your advice to people who are who are dealing with these issues and they're afraid that ICE is going to come knocking on their door, uh, and and you know that they they want to do the right thing, but at the same time they're scared to do the right thing because, you know, who knows what's going to happen? The families could be broken up and so forth. What do you do in that situation? Right. Well, I speak to them in love. Yeah. And also from my experience, like I mentioned, I am the daughter of Mexican immigrants, so I've lived through this. And my mm-hmm. father was a pastor, so the majority of his congregation dealt with immigration issues. So I know what's going on in their mind. Not just the financial hardship that it entails when they deport your husband or the threat of having to go back to a country you haven't been to in 10, 15 years, the displacement yeah. of their children's education. There is a lot. And, and lastly, part of this has to do yes. with what you were saying about the 15 years that the, the laws have been, not been enforced. Can you touch on that? Yes. So think about where we live. We live in California. Yeah. Um, people like me, people can't see me, but I have dark hair, dark eyes, um, dark skin. I'm nothing new here. Yeah. I'm a Mexican. I look Hispanic. Yeah. We're nothing new, but we also enjoy a lot of things that the rest of the nation doesn't enjoy. We have great agriculture, great crops, access to fine restaurants that's made possible through immigrant labor. What I'm trying to say is that immigrants also establish a great economy, Yeah, lower the cost of living for a, a lot of us, our food costs. If you go to Europe, food is very expensive. Oh yeah, it's crazy. So, you know, you want to take a look at every angle as well. So when I say that the U.S. government purposefully hasn't enforced the laws, it's because of the economic factor here. Mm. We all stand to g- gain. If you've stayed at a hotel, invariably it's a Hispanic a cleaning or custodian. If you go to a sushi restaurant, it's a Hispanic staff preparing your sushi. It's not Japanese. Yeah. Constructions, the city that we stand in is built by Hispanic labor, whether we want to admit it or not, because we work cheap. Often we don't have union protection and we're willing to do the work that a lot of people aren't willing to do the work. And a lot of people are um, paid under the table. And so uh, they don't have to abide by California's uh, minimum wage laws. And these. So the employers are involved in this too. So when the government chose to not enforce the law, it was to benefit a large sector of employers who became rich. Yeah. And then the rest of us, we start complaining because, and I'm not talking about myself personally, but I'm talking about what I hear from the public is, why are they on, on social programs? Yeah. Why are we paying for it? Because employer didn't pay them enough. Mm. If you do it legally, the employer was to set aside money for unemployment, Medicare, Medi-Cal, health insurance, but they chose to do it wrongfully. Mm. So this lax situation of non-enforcement under the Bush and the Obama administration started even with a little bit under Clinton administration. This kind of lax non-enforcement policy has created eleven over probably over 11 million undocumented immigrants who are now firmly established here. Mm. What do we do? And it's a similar problem that Abraham Lincoln faced when he became president. They told him, what are we going to do when we free them? And he said, well, we give them rights. And one of his advisors, I think it was Sam and Chase, he said, well, after we give them rights, what are these poor people going to do? What are they going to do? It's almost the same dialogue that we're having. It's like, if we legalize them, what will they do? Well, We have to give everybody their full rights so that they can afford to work, work properly. Enforcement's going to take place not just in excluding people, but also in establishing regulatory laws for the employers who have oppressed in violation of God's law Mm. and withheld proper wages from a 
11 million people, to be honest with you. As you mentioned before, in my uh, law firm, we also practice employment and labor law. So a lot of people ask me, why do you do both? Because every immigrant comes here to work. And if they're working, a lot of people are being paid under the table. So I have had the pleasure of representing even the custodians in my building when they weren't being paid properly for their meal breaks, their rest breaks. They weren't allowed to take rest breaks. Imagine being a 65-year-old man Mm. Um, earning $8 an hour for over 15 years, cleaning offices. That's what I encountered. Those kind of abuses is what the Lord hates. Yeah, He hates the abuse of the foreigner. Yeah. So it's not just about enforcement. It's about doing it right, doing it well. And that's where the employers come in and the corporations. Notice how silent they are in this whole immigration process. They've reaped millions yeah. on this. So, so what is the way forward in your mind then? I mean, I, if if, if uh, you know you had the power to be able to make these decisions and all, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a dream world. Give me here, the power. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what what does that look like? What's the what's the solution here that that works for the nation and keeps the values in place, but at the same time also blesses the foreigner and ultimately gives them the 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 opportunity to become a legal uh, documented uh, citizen of the United States. Blesses the foreigner and blesses this nation. Mm. Um, As I mentioned to you, since 1973, we have over 55 million aborted children. The Bible says, choose life that you live and your children and this land will be fruitful. Mm -hmm. If you choose death, it comes with a curse. He says in the word, if you choose death, I will give your land to the foreigner. I will dispossess you of this land. Something curious happened in under the Obama administration. We see a flock of children walking through the border, right? Mm-hmm. The unaccompanied minors. That was the Lord saying, there's 55 million missing children in America. Yeah. I will bring children from another nation. And our economy requires workers and labor so we can stay competitive in a global market. The United States enjoys such good pricing because we have cheap labor. We have a developing or a... Uh, up and coming country to the south of us that we have a huge labor pool that is able to work quite cheaply. What would you say to the person who says, yeah, but if we make them all legal, all of a sudden we're going to have to follow these minimum wage laws in California and we're all of a sudden not going to be able to hire all these people to do all this work. And so it was the right thing to do. Yeah, it was the right thing to do. If you couldn't afford it, why did you hire it? And that's the essence of oppression. Work cheaply for me so I reap a benefit at your expense. Mm. It's not okay. And I'm not saying legalize everybody. What I propose if I were president, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as you stated, we um, under the Barack Obama administration, he gave work permits to the young people, 2.1 million young people under a program called Deferred Action. Yeah. Those young people had to meet certain criteria saying that they walked, they came here, they were brought here, not intentionally, but their parents brought them here. They were given work permits, social security cards, so that they could contribute to the economy. Notice how they were not given permanent residence. No, Mm. they were just made workers. All the young people. Why the young people? Because they're going to work here for 40, 45 years and contribute to society. Okay, Esther, I'm going to have to cut you off here. But stay with us if you're listening, because this is a very interesting conversation. We've just made Esther president, and she's deciding (laughs) what to do. (laughs) She ran for school board and won, so who, who knows what's next? Okay, stay with us. We're going to be right back. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teaching. Teachings. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. This is Throughout All Ages Ministry with Joe and Stacy. We would like to equip you to share the gospel with confidence in a biblical and effective way. We would like to teach you through the proclamation of the gospel. Whether you're the skeptic, God who created you said that he has made himself known to you so that you are without excuse. One-on-one evangelism. How do you think you can get to heaven? I've never really thought about it, but I've always thought of, you know, doing good. For more information, go to throughoutallages.com, like us on Facebook, or visit us at YouTube at Throughout All Ages. 
When you need tires or service, count on Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service in Oceanside for a full range of affordable options in all the brands you trust. See their great customer reviews and special offers online. Hours Tuesday through Friday, 7.30 to 5.30, and Saturdays, 7.30 to 5. Call Dan and his team at 760-439-1631. Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service, 2405 Oceanside Boulevard in Oceanside, 760-439-1631. Do you have one-button espresso machines in your home or business? They make delicious coffee drinks, but they're not maintenance-free. Express Fix Coffee is San Diego's source for coffee and espresso machine repair, sales, and service. Call Dave Martin at Express Fix Coffee for new and used espresso machines, repairs, parts, and accessories. They'll save you time and money. Call Express Fix Coffee at 619-867-3853. Learn more at ExpressFixCoffee.com. There's got to be more than Welcome to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. My guest today is Esther Valdez. We're having a very interesting discussion about immigration. She is an expert on immigration. Um, how long have you been practic- practicing immigration law? Since 2003. Okay, fantastic. Wow. That's, that's awesome. And so she's really uh, got the knowledge here. Uh, she's lat- Latin. Do I Latin? Latina? Latina. Hispanic. Latina. Okay. Yes. okay. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is um, actually half Mexican and half Jewish. Oh, so she has an interesting combo, but That's her mother great. is from Mexico City. And uh, she's always on me about my pronunciation. You, you said that wrong. Huh? <laughs> so I'm in trouble. But anyway, um, so Esther, we were asking you, what would you do uh, under these circumstances? Can you pick up where you left off last segment? Okay, so we were talking about what I would do to yeah. fix the immigration problem in the nation. First, with the 2.1 million young people who already have work permits, Allow them to stay here and become residents. Okay. Don't make them go back to Mexico. Now, Many do, don't even speak Spanish. Do they get do they get licenses and do they get to vote? Um, I would say yes. Okay. Give them a path to citizenship. America's an idea. American ideals, if they promise, and many want to serve in the military, and we need them demographically to stay here and work and fight the battles, especially as we continue to wage war on terror. Yeah. Many want to serve. And they, from a Christian perspective, many of them are embracing some sort of um, uh, Christianity, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. We're talking about our brothers and sisters who want to pledge their lives, their talents, their treasure to this nation. Yeah. Let's let them do that. They're yeah. the cream of the crop. They're the young people. Now, what do you say to the person who says, yeah, but what about the, you know, how many thousands of people that have been waiting in line and then are trying to do it the right way? So, and they argue, hey, that's not fair for these people to just all of a sudden become citizens much more quickly. How, how, do, you, how do you deal with that? Well, the next step in my overall process would be, okay, now let's talk about the 11 million undocumented immigrants who are here that we don't really know a huge number. Do you know how many people are, are waiting to become citizens currently? What? Waiting to become residents? It depends on categories. Okay. It's divided by four categories and it's divided by nation as well. And that's only on the family-based side. What are the four categories? The four categories are U.S. citizen, uh, spouses, the parents of U.S. citizens, the children of U.S. citizens, then the lawful permanent residents, spouses, and their children, and then brothers and siblings of U.S. citizens. Oh, that's a lot of that's a lot of different. a lot of different waiting. Yes, yeah. so I don't know entirely what the backlog is. However, with regard to the undocumented population, we want to we want to screen them and say, okay, if you have a prior deportation order, and that's what we're seeing. We will enforce it. Mm. If you have committed a felony, like in Canada, um, you need to go home at this point. Now, if, SB 54, Yes. interrupting here, is, uh, so SB 54 is making a request uh, that the federal government, ICE, does not have the right to come into the California prisons. This was, I interviewed Joel Anderson. He was saying that mm-hmm. they don't want the... The, the federal government going into the prisons and deporting criminals. Is that true? Do you, do you know about that? It's detainers. Okay. It's detainers. When somebody encounters or commits a crime or an arrest, first they go to the state authorities. The state authorities hold them in custody uh, while they're being charged, if they're going to be charged, if they're convicted. Then ICE picks up the phone and says, well, if they're undocumented, pass them over. 
in California, they don't want that kind of communication. Mm. Now, the Los Angeles sheriff, he issued us a great memorandum, and he said, this is not good. Give them, give them access, because what happens is you're going to release them to the general population, and we're going to have to go look for them. And anybody else that we come in contact with, including their family members, because they're going to go home, ICE will have access to deporting all of them as well, oh, wow. creating chaos and mm. deportation and huge amounts of emotional distress. So what they created under SB 54 was a list of crimes that they would cooperate with. Well, the, that list of crimes is getting larger and larger mm. because you have to be inclusive. And for example, in the first draft, they didn't include rape if the victim was unconscious, that they would not contact ICE and they would not respect a detainer over that. That just can't be, yeah, right? Rape yeah. is rape. Yeah. We need those people out. And with regard to SB 54, I would ask the legislators to take a closer look at that because it act, only, we're only talking about protecting 8% of the immigrant population that has actually committed a crime. The other 92%, as your listeners know, are our neighbors, are our friends, are our loved they ones. Protection. They're not getting a protection. They're tr like that ACLU well, article. The, <laughs> protecting right. the criminals, but not protecting the, the good uh, upstanding uh, immigrants. And then as a Christian, yeah. we have the upper hand because in Numbers 35, we say God invented sanctuary cities, and this is not what God intended. They mm -hmm. took the name from Numbers chapter 35. Oh, that interesting? Yes, they t just like the rainbow was co-opted. Yeah, yep, yep. They took the name of the sanctuary cities, whereas God created these places of refuge in order to allow the perpetrator, the alleged perpetrator, to have access to due process, no vengeance, no vendettas, and the proper judiciary process mm. to continue. Not to protect him from the consequence of his That's action, so but to protect the proper uh, due process. And they're trying to flout that. You should write an article about that. That's really interesting. Well, it God created everything. <laughs> this is nothing new. The comparison between sanctuary cities in California and that discussion and sanctuary cities in the Bible. Well, and I can one-up that as yeah. an attorney because I see what happens when there is no cooperation between the federal authorities and the state authorities. Mm. What happens is that the, um, the alleged criminal, the, the alleged criminal immigrant goes back to an immigrant community. They're not going to come to Coronado where yeah, I live. Yeah. They're not going to come to your zone. They're going to come back where the victim probably lives. Mm. And I've represented uh, at least one victim of a crime where the, the, uh, the perpetrator was released back to where she lived. So who are we really hurting? We're hurting the other 92% that is the most vulnerable population yeah. when you refuse to cooperate with federal authorities. Wow. That's powerful. So um, I keep taking you on on rabbit trails here, guiding you off. But we still gotta, <laughs> <laughs> we got to figure out what what um, your president and uh, so so that you've got all these people waiting in line to become immigrants. They've been waiting for a long time. You've got these eleven million people that that want to become, and that really it's a benefit both to them and to our country that they become uh, legal. So uh, how does that process play out in in your mind? Legally. And the, le the law is already written. Hmm. So if you come here to the United States, you have to file a petition. And if you violated the law, they allow you to file a waiver. A waiver exists for any other violations of the law, excluding certain felonies, such as declaring yourself a U.S. citizen. Allow them to do that if they are law-abiding, if they want to respect the laws and they yeah. want to remain here. Allow that. Our population can still absorb that. We need it. Yeah. We can prove our economy thrives on it. So allow them to do that. With regard to the refugees, I think what the president was attempting to do, legally it was in disarray, but what he's attempting to do, and as he stated in CBN article, which you probably saw, was to allow Christian minorities to come to this nation. We need to allow our Christian because brothers and sisters to that come. They're facing too. Yes, yeah. it's the number one most persecuted religion, and Barack Obama refused to acknowledge that. Instead, he allowed ten thousand uh, uh, Muslims to come in in the month of June, whereas the United Nations has declared declared the genocide of Christians to be a primordial issue. Yeah, but only in that same month. Less than 20 people, Christians, were allowed to come in, That's even incredible. though Christian leaders were telling him, hey, the girls are getting raped. Yeah. Yazidi girls are being enslaved. The dads are being killed just for being Christians. No, there was no protection. So we need to continue 
to allow refugees come in, especially the persecuted um, around the world. Okay, my guest today is Esther Valdez. She's an expert on immigration. She's an immigration attorney, a local here in San Diego. We have one more segment left, and we'll uh, finish this off and just continue to look at this from a biblical and a Christian perspective. That's uh, we want to we want to be compassionate, but we also want to uphold the values, and that's really what we are, our immigration laws are for: is to uphold the American values. Uh, so that we don't become some other country with uh, different values. We'll be right back. For 36 years, Fastlane Kayaking has helped people like you experience everything that's great about San Diego. Fastlane makes fishing and water sports fun and easy. Hobie Cat kayaks feature a popular pedal system, not paddles, keeping your hands free as you fish. You no longer need to tow and gas up a boat to experience great San Diego fishing. Call or come in for your no-charge demo ride. 619-222-0766. Fastlanesailing.com. At Dana Landing Marine, Across from SeaWorld, 619-222-0766. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teachings. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. Hi, I'm Marissa Conover, and I would love to help you buy or sell your home. I've worked as a realtor for more than 13 years, and as a San Diego native, my passion and experience will help make your move as peaceful as can be. Call me at 619-251-1577. That's 619-251-1577. Or visit Conover Homes.com. I will cast my cares on you. You're Welcome to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. We're on our last segment here, and uh, we're talking with Esther Valdez. And uh, this is such a relevant issue to our current, uh, what's going on in our culture today, because there's so much upheaval over immigration and should it be allowed, shouldn't it be allowed, should we build a wall, shouldn't we build a wall. And, you know, we're trying to deal with uh, terrorists coming into the country, but at the same time, people are arguing you can't you can't keep out everybody just because you know. For example, most of the Muslims, most of the terrorism that we see going on around the world is happening by Muslims. Does that mean you keep all Muslims out? And then, how do you deal with what's happening in um, San Diego, where we have and, and places like Texas, where you have a a huge flood of immigrants coming in from uh, Mexico? And uh, you know what should be done there with these situations? So. Uh, Anyway, uh, Esther, we were talking about how you have a vision for what should happen next, where we should be going next with the immigration issues. What's the difference between uh, bad immigration policy and good immigration policy? And what I mean by that is when our listeners are, are sifting through the news that they get from, you know, different places like CNN or Fox or wherever, mm -hmm. what should they be, they be listening for and say, that I disagree with? What are the issues that come up with? That is not good versus this is what we should be embracing. I mean, everything you've said to me so far seems to me to make a lot of sense. And so my question would be, what's the holdup? What, what is happening in the Senate, in the House, uh, you know, in, in the executive branch that's preventing these things from taking place that seem to me to be very common sense and also seem to be very compassionate? So Follow the money. This okay. is about a globalist agenda. Bad immigration policy, to answer your question, has a globalist agenda. Meaning what? Open borders let everybody in. Mm -hmm. America belongs to the world. We're one of many extraordinary nations. No. We need to protect this nation. The, God invented nations, invented boundaries, and nations, just like people, have destinies and purposes. Um I believe, as, as a Christian, that this nation was founded on Christian principles. Yeah. Maybe they're no longer reflected in our media and our society, but it's still something very valuable that the rest of the world is willing to sacrifice to come over here and to live and to prosper and to work here. And That's, some of those Christian values yes. that you're talking about is, for example, is freedom. Yes. Freedom, freedom of religion, freedom of expression, freedom to assemble, freedom of the press. 
I mean, you don't have these things. And in the, right like life, the, the right to life, the very first one in the Bill of Rights. Life, That's what we are preserving. Yeah. We're not preserving um, the Caucasian race. Yeah. We're not preserving, you know, the daughters of the American Revolution. We're fighting over the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. That's what needs to be preserved because it was founded on the Bible. God gave us these laws, and that's how we maintain American extraordinary and exceptionalism throughout the world. Mm. That's what we're fighting for. And also as a Christian, I see it also allowing the gospel to be propagated, not just here, but also abroad, if we're able to protect ourselves at this critical mo moment in time. So good immigration policy would be something that's compassionate, lawful, that the, everybody is properly vetted, inspected, and admitted, which is the legal standard. This already exists. Yeah. But also taking into consideration the economic realities of what it means to have a youthful, dynamic demographic, which is represented by, for example, Hispanic immigrants. They're younger. They're going to work longer. They're going to incorporate themselves into our military force. They're going to fight the battles of tomorrow. They want to be here. Many have adopted American ideals. Why not allow them to become Americans yeah. at this point of time? Now, um, so I'm imagining in my mind what somebody might say. They might say, uh, look it, we have a lot of people coming here um, from Mexico who are saying, you know, vive Mexico or whatever. And they don't seem to be assimilating. They seem to be saying, hey, we want to, we want to make uh, Southern California more a part of Mexico. How do you respond to that kind of attitude? Well, this is what happened when my family came from Mexico. We had a great neighbors. Yeah. And we had a, my father was the pastor of a Hispanic congregation. And he had friends who were in white congregations. They befriended my family. How mm. else are culture and values and language going to be transmitted but through these friendships? Yeah. It's not the government's job to assimilate or to force certain values down your throat. Sure. If you want to be friendly to your neighbor, this is how you do it. You, you share books with them. Yeah. You treat them, hey, this is what, how, what Thanksgiving means. That's how we learned it. Yeah. But as Christians, we have that duty to be able to welcome the foreigner and to teach them this is what being an American means. I think we've also lost sight of that as well. We've yeah. lost our purpose as in America. We're, fa we're in different factions. We have our political groups. We identify however we want in terms of gender, our ancestors, how our regions even, our yeah. political persuasion. We are Americans. We need to unify and to know what it means to be an American. And that's how in sharing our values with an immigrant family, maybe it's somebody down the street. Maybe it's walking over to and staying at the Spanish service, mm. where if your church has a Spanish service, not having them be separated. Yeah. A lot of the people just right next door to you are dealing financial with financial hardship, poverty issues, and you might be the solution. Just Something simple like, hey, I know how to get your kids to college. Yeah. This is a college admission. Can I help you fill this out? Yeah, that's great. People did that for my family. I wouldn't be here unless one of my neighbors, my friends, um, my father's friend, he gave us an encyclopedia collection. Wow. Then he gave us William Shakespeare and Dickens. If he hadn't done that and my father hadn't said, read it because you can't go outside, <laughs> I don't think I'd be a lawyer today. Yeah. I would. And then somebody taught my mom how to cook a turkey for Thanksgiving and told us about the first Thanksgiving. That's how you do it. But nobody's sharing like neighbors anymore. That's why you see the Mexican flag being waved because that's where they felt lastly at home. They don't. Mm. They feel like foreigners still yeah, here. Yeah. So, so we really, as a as a church and as a Christian community, our job is really to reach out, and that's something we can't lose sight of. And and uh, it's easy to, especially if you're very comfortable and things are going well. Um, sometimes we we become more isolationist and yes. uh, rather than reaching out to those uh, neighbors, which is what Christ has called us to do. Yes. Yeah, sometimes out of fear, I can tell you, um, we're not any different than any other American. We yeah. want the same things, same opportunities. We want the American dream. The American dream is for everybody. We want it lawfully. We want it legally. We came to this country to be protected from other countries where we were no longer welcome, probably because of our race. Yeah. It's, we're not an opposite to anybody else's values. Yeah. But, you In know, Acts, the Bible says that we're all from one father and you know, uh, fundamentally, we only have such a few, few, little bit of time here left, but fundamentally, Esther, are, would you say that the main thing holding back, um, you know, good immigration 
is just that the government hasn't put the resources towards making that happen. Is that what we're dealing with right now? I think the government hasn't wanted to yeah. because of the economic benefit to our nation. Mm. Once enforcement happens, remember, and you hit it right on the head, employers will have to pay taxes, will have to report, will have to e-verify, demand social security. And those are the calls now that I'm getting from worried employers. Oh, I'd been paying under the table. I got to declare it. So they start giving pink slips to everybody that they were exploiting. Yeah. For years and years, it yeah. wasn't okay. Yeah. So, you know, the law is twofold, but the Bible says, you know, righteousness exalts a nation. Well, we, what we also got to do is lower lower taxes. So the government's got to stop wasting money. Yes. <laughs> we got all these uh, business people that are trying to keep their businesses in place too. So yes. It's, it's, everybody's dealing but with all the But it's never a good way to exploit anybody. No, you're right. Absolutely. Never a good no. way to exploit oh. your gardener, or even if you don't own a business, you have yeah. a home, Pay your maid yeah. the do, right wages. Do what's right, and God will take care of the rest. That's what the Bible says. Matthew absolutely. 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Yeah, absolutely. Esther, thank you so much for being on the show today. <laughs> You're very welcome, Kevin. Okay. Thank you. Okay, for those of you listening, I hope you join me next week. We'll have another fantastic show, and I hope you have a one wonderful Saturday. If you have not yet put God first in your life, uh, now's the time to do it. God bless you. Did you miss part of today's program? Don't worry, we're committed to helping you get the info you need. Okay, that was dumb. But for real, visit educateforlife.com for podcast and video recordings of the show and to sign up for the School of Unshakable Faith. Leave us your comments, compliments, questions, or concerns at 800 243